going back, I think, ooh, almost all the way back to Oracle 8, maybe, maybe even before that, we introduced the concept of the returning clause. Often when you're inserting a row and you want to get some data back, rather than have to query the data, you could insert a value into the database and then ask the database as part of that insert statement to return some values back to you. This was very, very useful, obviously, when it came to inserting, say, primary keys that were sequences populated by triggers or defaults. You would do your insert without knowing the value of the primary key, and the primary key would be then dispatched back to you. Let's explore that now with an example. I'll create a little table here called MyEmp. It's got a, just a couple of columns. I'll populate that using the new 23C values constructor function, which is very, very cool. That gives me my five rows. So I'll query my table and you can see I've got five rows in there, one through five with some sample employee names. I mentioned that an insert is very, very useful for getting a value of a primary key back. Let's do something a little bit different. Let's do an update now and I want to get some values back. So I'll declare a variable here, which is going to store our returning value. And then I'll write a simple update statement. I'm going to change the employee name to Connor for employee number three, and I'm gonna return that employee name back into that return variable. In SQL Plus, I just use the print command to print out a value, and it says, yes, the name is Connor. Now, that's all well and good, but the reality is, especially when I'm doing an update, maybe less so an insert, but when I'm doing an update, generally, I already know what the ultimate value is going to be. I know what I'm updating a value to because that's typically the value I'm passing in as part of the update statement. In this example here, I know that I'm setting the employee name to Connor because that's what I'm passing in as the value. Often with an update statement, what I really wanted to know was what was the previous value. Yes, the new value was Connor, but what was it before that? And in 23C, we've made some changes to address this. I'll roll back that change, and now I'll declare another variable called old value. So now we have two variables floating around. Now I can rerun my update. I'm changing the employee name to Connor again for that same employee. But notice now the new syntax. I can now do returning the old value of a column and the new value of a column, and I can choose which ones I want into a number of variables. So now I have access to both the before and after values of those particular rows. I can print out the new value, it's Connor, but I can print out the old value as well. That was Mary. So more flexibility around the returning clause. You don't have to return both. You can return just the new or you can return just the old. If you ignore the old and the new, what'll happen is it'll default to new because that contains the backward compatibility.